Hello and welcome to this interview with Brad Terhune, one of the artists presently on display at the Alpha Art Gallery's current exhibition, Shifted Nature. I'm Chris Brostek. Um, we will be going over some of Brad's artistic process as well as the pieces currently on display at the physical and online presentations at the Alpha. And we're going to start out simple. How are you doing today? I'm doing very well. Thank you for having me. Thank you. So let's start off with some history. Um, wh where did you get started with creating the collages and what really drove you to continue? Um, I've, I've made collages uh, pretty much as long as I can remember. Um, uh, t you know, as a child, kind of cutting things up and putting them back together and um, in different ways. Um, I, I think uh, it was I've kind of done that on and off, um, you know, through through school and uh, and 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 in college. Uh, I can remember at an art school, um, you know, deciding that a, a certain project was a collage. Um, kind of put it aside for a while. About ten years ago, I started a series. I, I found a couple of old books um, that had to do with surfing, um, which I found intriguing. This is New Jersey. We love our beaches. I'm not a surfer, um, but um, love to just look at the imagery and the, the, the fashion, the culture of, of surfing. And they, they were old black and white um, pictures from the 60s um, and um, and just started just started up again with, um, you know, working in a, in a way that I really had not worked in a in kind of a series way before. Um, where I kind of stick to a subject matter or even um, um, I think at the time kind of exploring a bit as far as um, stylistically what I wanted them to do. So they were a little, they were a little varied, um, uh, but uh, they, people, people liked them and I liked them and, um, and I got a, I got a chance to show them a couple of times and uh, it eventually, I, I kind of ended the series, but it kind of, it, you know that was the catalyst to really kind of concentrate on on that, and that was that was about ten years ago or so, and um, and and since then it's kind of just kind of just who I am now at this point. So, how do you feel collage work as a medium really delivers your messages or any of the subjects that you cover, which are a wide range and include things from kind of more fun stuff like the psychedelic goats that we'll talk about later or more political and social justice oriented works. Yeah, I think I think collages, um, although, you know, there seems to be in recent years um, an appreciation for it. I think uh, I think there, there are people that just don't like it and don't get it. Um, I've had I've had conversations with people that just don't really see it as a as a as a, an art form. Um, and obviously I kind of totally disagree. Um, but I think um, it's, it's, it's a great, it's, it, it is something that people can do. I mean, obviously if you can hold a pair of scissors and you can cut and glue, you can make a collage. Um, I'm, I've just recently found a, um, on Instagram, a, um, uh, a six year old collage artist that is, his work is phenomenal. Um, it's great. He's got a, this great sense of composition um, um, I think, you know, that's a big part of it for me as far as, um, you know, the, the, the composition has to kind of suit the, the subject matter, as you said, and the message that I'm, I'm, I'm trying to deliver. Um, uh, I've, I've really only have had one situation where I made something and I felt like it was saying something very particular, particular. And the person I was discussing it with, um, it was actually a curator. Um, they, um, they just didn't see it at all. You know, I mean, the, the, you know, the message can be overt or it can be the subtle thing, you know, it could be just what it's about, which the, that's what the goats are, right? They're, they're about what you see. Whereas in other, works um i might be making a statement it could be political it could be social justice kind of thing um 
But uh, yeah, I think it. I think it's a great medium because of if you think about where it comes from, it comes from paper. It comes from printed paper, which delivers a message. And you, you know, I, I have one uh, collage friend that he um, he works very much with a lot of news type imagery, um, and it's a perfect vehicle for for that um, because it's 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 now it's contemporary. Um, there's a there's. Yeah, I think um, you know it doesn't it doesn't get the respect it deserves. Um, you know. Now, with some of the imagery you're talking about, you have a friend who uses a lot of news imagery. You use a wide range of imagery from nature, historic paintings, photographs. Can you explain how you select the images that you kind of put together in your collage, and if there's kind of any circumstances that maybe you won't select an image for a certain piece? It, it has to appeal on me to appeal to me on a very kind of base level like it's it, you know it's an aesthetic kind of thing um, yes sometimes you have to seek out very specific things I need I need a, a, a car for this for example but um, it's I, I call it the hunting and gathering right you um, you can decide where these images come from um, uh, I have a large collection of National Geographics and they employed the best photographers in the world. Um, the color in the in the ones from the 60s and the 70s is like saturated and heavy and um, really kind of appealing to me as far as an aesthetic sense. But um, I will I will kind of take from anywhere. I, I do I, I root through those book stalls and 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 flea markets and and um, garage sales and look for um, certain specific things based on what I might be working on at the time. Um, but I also am aware enough to kind of like say, you know, find something that's intriguing, a texture, a color, um, a, a, a face and say, let me let me let me save that. Let me put that to the side. You never know when you can um, might need that. Now, one piece I really enjoyed of your works is Mountains Between Us, which has kind of a lot of space, a lot of blending of different source materials together. Um, if it's okay, could you detail how you approached composing the piece and what you were trying to say when you were creating it, if anything? It started out very much um, about kind of um, arranging thing. I mean, I think I started with the, the, the figure of the woman, um, which is, you know, from from art history. And um, I kind of I like to that juxtaposition of, of things that are very, very old with something that's very, very new. And um, as I started to kind of layer things together and, and build things together, um, I use I use mountains quite a bit. And um, I um, I like to play with space and and kind of make it a bit disjointed. So you know those mountains, the fact that she is she's being overlapped by the mountains, um, so it kind of totally you know uh, totally plays with space there. Um, I've kind of gotten into um, thinking a little bit more about my backgrounds and kind of and and to to really kind of pull the image together compositionally. Um, and give it a certain kind of feeling to it, right? Um, I, I try to make these things very much my own. Like they, you know, that it, it is definitely, um, you know, my hand, my mind that kind of put these things together. Um, as I start, as I start, I also had the image of the of the of the male character in it, and um, I. Um, very intentionally, you know, cropped him so that he's literally leaving. Um, he's leaving her. He's leaving the image. Um, there's a there's a big mountain right between them. They're not getting along too well. There's a there's some relationship problems going on there. <laughs> there definitely is, and you know, some of it is is um, is is decorative in a sense, like um, the the cut leaves in the foreground um, was, you know, as far as a sense of balance, I felt it needed, it needed that there, you know. Um, so I never, uh, or very rarely do I like, um, 
I do I put the thing together until I really kind of have it like laid out. Sometimes what happens is you kind of glue things together and you put them together and you cut them further, you know, and kind of chop them up a little bit more to make something work that uh, you want to take in another direction. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, for me, it's like two approaches, either one, like I start with a little something and I know that it's definitely going this way. But the other direction is I, I kind of have to see where that meaning is going to take me as more and more kind of pieces kind of come together. And, uh, uh, you know, I never, I never um, really th even think about how many things I'm combining together. I was listening to a, a podcast where a painter said, um, you know, her, um, her paint, her, she thinks her pa best paintings are paintings that she put together in two hours because kind of the immediacy of it. And, um, and the, 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 the point I'm trying to make is that um, it doesn't really um, matter how many different parts there are in one collage. It just matters how they kind of work together, you know, compositionally, thematically, and what meaning kind of emerges. Now, with you saying that two pieces are coming to mind, um, occultation and exactly the same clean room, because both of them have this marble statue figure that is fairly prominent. Can you maybe go into detail if those are connected works, if they both happen to use marble statues, or if they're trying to say different things, trying to talk to each other? Yeah, they are kind of talking to each other. That's a guy, I like that. Um, uh, they, the, the series is called Difficult Listening, and it's kind of a reimagination of, of record album covers. Um, just using kind of snippets of lyrics to kind of kind of put the icing on the cake as it, as it were. Um, I think in, in, the, in, in those two, both early on, early uh, images that I made, um, I, I was just really attracted to those images. And, and again, that juxtaposition of um, sort of like what you see in, in Mountains Between Us um, is that, um, that juxtaposition of kind of putting things in these kind of surreal environments. And I really did want um, the focus to be on their, on their faces. They're these beautiful uh, marble statues. Um, and, and kind of, uh, again, kind of playing with the spatial relationships between them. Um, uh, I, 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 uh, I, 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 now I'm kind of thinking about how, what you said about how, how they're kind of talking to each other. And it, it really is kind of interesting when, um, when you look at work, especially like in a gallery setting where you see work side by side, rather than, you know, something you might be flipping through on Instagram and, and kind of seeing one at a time. Uh, but that's the interesting thing about, um, you know, series of works of how they can um, one one piece informs the next piece. And uh, that's that's definitely happening there. And, um, um, you know, sometimes you're very aware of that. And I think I was there with that. Um, and it's a it's a series that, you know, is continuing and, um, you know, uh, I'm, I'm very excited about. Now, I am going to ask about another series that you have, which is Psychedelic Goats and Other Porn Creatures, which we have <laughs> two of on display. Um, so why goats? And what's going on with um, kind of these guys? Well, these guys are, um, goats are, um, they're cute. They're, um, <laughs> that doesn't end there. Um, they're, they're, they're a little unpredictable. They've got... Uh, they got a little zaniness to them. Um, I've, I've witnessed some things with goats where they get a little wild and a little crazy. I mean, if people didn't like goats, we wouldn't have something like goat yoga going on right now, right? Um, so it, it, it did come out of um, kind of more serious work. I needed kind of like, um, you know, I needed kind of a break from like trying to make work that was really kind of saying something specific. I had been working in a, in a collaborative uh, sense with two other artists who uh, we were tackling the idea of the fear of others. Um, the uh, uh, one, one of the gentlemen kind of brought, brought the, um, the idea to the group. Um, the Syrian refugee crisis was kind of like at its peak. Um, he had had um, an opportunity to kind of actually speak with some, some from uh, refugees 
and was we we needed to broaden it a bit it was a little bit for to in a collaborative way it was like a little too narrow of a, of a viewpoint um so the, the work was kind of serious in nature you know why why do people why are people fearful of people that are different than them and you know uh, i mean obviously it continues and it's you know historically um, there's many many things you can point to but um i needed i needed a break i guess you could say and again these um i happened to come across these this great book where there were these nice big images at the time i was um i was getting a little bolder and a little bit bigger with with the images um and uh and wanted to see what i could do because in the past everything had been very much like nine by twelve um very much so um and i had, at the time i was kind of exploring um and you can see it in examples there, um, kind of exploring, um, you know, getting things kind of out of the rectangle and not necessarily filling all the space. Um, but New dimensions uh, and things like that. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, there's um, there's a, there's a lot of boxes that you can pretend not to be kind of um, goofy about it, but <laughs> you know, there's 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 lots of boxes that you can kind of put yourself into and kind of get stuck in. And to kind of do new things, you have to say to yourself, well, what if what if I don't glue that all the way to the edge or I leave the white of the paper showing or or what if instead of of gluing it, you know, there's there's one of them, um, a later one where it's um, it's put together on a black mat board, you know, so um, I kind of, I've kind of open to the, the idea is that they're supposed to be fun. They're supposed to be a little weird and zany. Um, and um, I, I think they're, um, people either really kind of, it, they like them, like maybe they like goats, you know? And so they're drawn to them and they, they, they're, um, you know, but other people just don't like them very much. But, you know, I, I love making them and I love making a new one because I don't know, there's just something about that particular series that has kind of, really excited me um they're just i just like you know it's just like you need to needed that fun kind of thing um so i do think they're i do think they're fun good i'm glad you so. do i'm glad you do um but uh yeah they're it's um it's we'll, we'll see where it goes I'm, I'm i'm looking for more goats as it's as we speak oh uh, you've always got to look for them if you find some if you sign, find some good pictures of goats you know where to send them of course. <laughs> now, kind of also thinking, aside from collages, you do have a background in painting. And I was wondering if maybe you approach the two mediums differently, or maybe if you ever combine them, like when you look at a collage, maybe you view it with a painter's eye, or maybe you don't. Maybe you have collage mode and painter mode, and I wanted to hear if you did. Yeah, I think I think um, there have there's examples in the past where uh, you, you definitely can kind of make that connection. Um, I think over the last five years or so, I think anything that I've done has been, um, I kind of need some geometry to kind of rein it in. Um, you know, if you think of something like Jackson Pollock's splatter paintings, where it's just, you know, it's just free for all. Um, I think, I think I continue to, um, uh, explore abstraction uh, because I, I have a, I have a, I have an issue with it. I question it. Um, I love it. I really do. And it's not anything against abstraction, but I, I do sort of in the same way that I wouldn't want my, my collages to be kind of perceived a certain way that I see a little bit negative. Um, I kind of wrestle with the, the question is when do we in, in abstract painting, when do we veer into the, the decorative? And is, is, is that a problem? Is there a problem with that? You know, and who, and who's to say what's exactly decorative anyway. Um, but um, yeah, I think, uh, I think they kind of have to coexist at the same time. Um, I mean, I will literally go from one to the other in the next in in, in a moment. Um, one thing that I've explored in very very small amounts is um, kind of combining the two, and that's something I'd, I'd like to kind of um, 
this direction I'd like to kind of move into a little bit. Um, I think it, I think it would take a little bit more planning on my part. It might, it might involve, um, since the collages are very small and the paintings, um, well, maybe not, um, some of the, some, some paintings, the paintings that I, that you guys shared with you guys, um, tended to be, you know, pretty, you know, on the smaller side, but some have been kind of big. And, and so that's kind of, um, interesting to me, like why, why, why um, I guess I'm trying to bring them together sort of in a way, just the physical size of them and, and what you kind of, um, how you kind of perceive them. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think, um, I think maybe ultimately I, I would love to be a, a painter, <laughs> you know, um, but we'll see, we'll see what happens. Now, kind of thinking again about how much you do, how many different things you do, where do you draw your inspiration from? Well, that's that's where you know I I, I kind of wrestle with too. Like I know um, some artists are very good about, um, for lack of a better word, like kind of branding. Like they're kind of known for they do this one thing, they do it really well. Um, there's the expression "jack of all trades, master of none." Um, but I, I think I need all these things and these different, you know, whether you're talking about is the is the collage work more, um, you know, serious in nature or more playful in nature. Um, I think uh, a lot of it um, just comes from trying to be as open as you can. I. I I, I've said before that I can't really, I can't like flip through a book or flip through a magazine or a newspaper without looking at things in the sense of, hmm, that's something, that's something that I could use and tearing that page out and, and moving on. Um, so, but I think where it really comes together is when, when one piece kind of meets another piece and something happens like you, okay, this, this, that this, that, that woman that's in, in mountains between us against that background, which are very, very different in the, you know, where they came from and uh, when they, when they were created, um, you know, that's why I thought it was great that you guys, um, you know, um, uh, saw collage as a form of photography, right? It's a, it's a manipulation of photography. If, if, um, if we accept Photoshop, you know, if we can take a photograph and put it into Photoshop and do stuff to it and still a photograph, why can't we take from different sources, disparate sources, and put them together and it becomes this whole new image and be kind of accepted as, as photography? Not to mention, um, you have said how you work so much with print and you work in an analog fashion, correct? Right, right. So you're kind of limited by... Um, uh, you know, I mean, the thing not, I mean, if, if people want to do digital collage, I, I, I'm a big fan of it and I've seen great, great work. Um, it's just not, it's just not me. I like, I love to have that exacto knife in my hand and be cutting away. And, and, and I like the challenge that if I find that, that picture of that goat, it's that particular size. I can't make it any bigger. I can't make it any smaller. It is what it is. And I have to make it work somehow. Um, uh, and, and, and that the challenge is there and that's, um, you know, part of the appeal to me, definitely. Um, that's a very, that's a good point. Um, I'd like, I, I, you know, and I, I would maybe, maybe down the road, maybe get, throw a little digital in there and, um, and, and, and print it and cut it up and do something else to it. You know, <laughs> um, who knows, you know, there's, there's so much that you could do and, you know, the, 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 the borders between things are, are fluid as far as what you can do. And, um, that's a great thing. I mean, I love, I've always loved like mixed media period, um, um, and interesting ways that people put things together. I think it's great. Now, something else you're really emphasizing how you have to be open. And I think that with the COVID-19 pandemic, we've all had to be open to things we never necessarily thought of. So has the pandemic reshaped your process at all or impacted your work in any way? In the beginning, I felt kind of guilty because I wasn't really doing much. I mean, everybody all of a sudden 
had this, I mean, I was working, I was teaching remotely and it was very challenging. Um, I think maybe it was kind of sucking the energy out of me in that sense. But I, you know, I feel this guilt if I'm not, if I'm not working. Um, as, as time kind of moved on and we moved into, um, we moved into the summer and George Floyd and the, um, the, the marches and the protests for Black Lives Matter, um, I was looking at a lot of, immediately there was work being made, you know, um, about it. Um, and it's, it's, it's amazing to me how, how artists can respond so quickly to stuff. And as a, as a, as a, as a, a, a person of a certain age, and, um, um, uh, you know, I, I, I started to think about what, what's my response, you know, what is my response? And I started, and it was almost like a cathartic kind of thing. I happen to have, um, like many artists do, just a lot of things that have been um, kind of touched here and touched there and you touch them again. And um, I had a lot of small panels that I had kind of worked on, uh, pieces of wood, canvas boards and I started um, what what was really you know there was there was there was anger you know um, and I started to think about how these uh, victims of uh, police um, shootings and um, different scenarios started to become almost anonymous in a way that like you forget the names you forget the scenarios of what what how um, um, you know, their story unfolded and how their life ended. And um, so I started drawing these very anom anonymous kind of silhouette portraits um, on these panels and just kind of kept doing it and kind of like just playing very simply with the turn of a head, the position of a head. Um, and I started kind of lining them up on the studio wall, leaning up against the, the wall layering them. Um, I've always been kind of taken with um, memorials of any kind that people place in a location where somebody has passed away, whether it's a car accident on the side of the road and how um, lots of times there's pictures that will be kind of like layered together. Um, and they started to come together. And um, as, as the seething within me continued as, um, you know, and I participated in marches and things like that, um, uh, if, if one more of these things happen, if one more of these events happen, I'm just going to start lining them up outside on the sidewalk out in front of my house. I never did. Um, but um, I did have an opportunity. I'm involved with um, uh, Pro Arts Jersey City. And uh, right now, actually, it's going on now. We have the Empowering Show um, that we uh, our inaugural show at 150 Bay down in Jersey City. And I was, I was lucky enough to get the work um, accepted into the show. And I kind of presented it exactly as I did in the studio. It's, it's, it's kind of quietly leaning up against the wall. There's, I think, seven or eight different panels kind of layered together um, in, a, in a group there. And they're kind of silent um, and they kind of speak to, um, you know, what, you know, the statement that I kind of wanted to make and some of the issues without kind of you know, banging anybody over the head with my opinion. Um, you know, that's kind of, I thought uh, something that I could do that was, you know, meaningful and tasteful and respectful uh, above everything else, you know. Um, I think, uh, you know, we have a lot, we have a lot of work to do in that department. Um, and, um, you know, I, I kind of, I just kind of struggle with a lot of some of the things that have happened in the past year, uh, kind of culminating with the the um, the uh, assault on the Capitol, and you know who were those people? They were they were me. They were they were middle aged white guys, you know. So it's very disturbing to me in a lot of different ways. It's very it's a very complex situation. Um, there's it's it's and it's but it's very easy to. Um, you know, formulate a, a black and white answer for things. Um, and that's, that's our problem is that we don't, we don't have these conversations. So, um, so uh, yeah, that was kind of my way of kind of dealing with um, that part of the pandemic, um, which is, is, a, is a big, 
a big part of it. I mean, I, I don't think it's it's any mistake that uh, these things intersected with each other at that particular time in that, you know, in, in this country, you know. Um, so hopefully we learn, we grow. Um, you know, I, I, I do believe that art can, can, can heal or at least help. Um, I so. think that the art often can help us get, have those conversations that sometimes we're frankly not having. Definitely. Um, Definitely. And that brings us to the end because I have no more questions. Okay. So thank you so much, Brad. But if there's anything else you'd like to add, anything you might've thought of while we were chatting, like anything that you're working on currently, any other shows that you're going to be in, feel free to share. Um, I would just say, uh, as we, as we, as things kind of start to open up, I really hope that um, people will come out. They'll come to Alpha. They'll come to um, some of the things. Uh, you know, we have great art venues in New Jersey, and there's so much going on. And um, you know. Don't don't go to Home Goods and buy that painting, you know, that mass produced thing to put on over your couch. There there's so many talented people out there and such varied work just in New Jersey alone. I mean, it's um, so, yeah, there's a few things uh, kind of in the um, in the in the in the works. I I'm kind of a little burnt out by um, um, uh, uh, the strictly online thing that's why i think it's great what you guys did you kind of mixed it up and did both which uh i think i think um will kind of inform what what how we do things in the future you know i think it, it has its place um but nothing really replaces walking through a gallery looking at work talking to artists talking to other people um you know and um really just kind of enjoying what, pe what people do. I mean, that's so, I mean, I, I mean, how many times have you seen something and you said, oh, I wish I, I wish I had done that. I wish I had thought of that. It happens to me every single day. Well, once again, Brad, thank you so much for speaking with us today, sharing your insight. If you'd like to learn more about Brad, more about the alpha, feel free to look at the description of this video. And once again, thank you. And that concludes our day. Thank you so much. All right.